guys go get the fish? We go get them. Um, I am from Kodiak Island, and we have all five species, a lot of the salmon. And, um, and Kodiak Island, there's a lot of fishing going on. What I do in the summertime is, I'm really busy in the summertime um, being outside, and I'm also, um, I'm a weaver, so I collect a lot of grass and spruce root in the summertime, and that's really time consuming too. So what I do is I get my fish, and I skin them, and I scrape them, and then I put them in the freezer. And then at this time of the year, when I'm not catching fish anymore, there's just less, uh, less going on than I process my skin. Do you only use salmon or do you use rockfish and halibut? Um, I've tried halibut and not have success with it. Um, I've tried codfish, which turns out very nice. I've used halibut. The halibut is a very beautiful skin. It's very strong. And the belly part, it comes out so white. And then it has that darker, either black or grayish part on the back. So it makes really pretty patterns on it. But I, um, I also tried a rockfish and it has big scales on it. So it's kind of hard, it was kind of hard to work with that one. And where I'm from, we catch um, fish through the ice because our lake is huge. And all we do is go fishing and the fish that we catch during this winter time is like the Dolly Varden and the trout. So, but just the Dolly Varden and trout right now, pike and um, that's about it. The salmon is mainly caught in this um, summer and fall. What kind of bread do you use? This is totally sewn together with um, sinew threads that I've twisted. You can rip this whole thing into sections. You can see where all the sections are, um, where all the threads are all joined together. And the papery stuff that's over it, that kind of keeps them together. So what you do is you you pull these threads apart until they get down to their very smallest parts. And it would depend if I was twisting um, like a string for a bow, like for a bow and arrow, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't strip these down as fine as when I strip them down for um, sewing. So you can see they just they just get smaller and smaller and smaller into threads. And I have a few finer ones here. And then what I do is, you can see that they may, sometimes I have sinew that's just not as long, like this. So then what you do is you rope them together and you keep adding and twist them into um, longer threads. It's like a leather, which is not waterproof. You have to do some waterproofing to it. But it is windproof. It's not the stitching that goes back and forth that makes it waterproof. It's the way your seam is folded. And then when it folds out, the way the piece that's folded comes out, it acts kind of like a gutter. It's a couching stitch. It keeps your stitches from pulling and tearing your product. The other one is a little more, like if you see on a gut, that's a little more sensible as a waterproof stitch. And that truly is more considered a waterproof stitch. If you made fish skin mittens and they weren't exactly waterproof, have they had oil applied to them? If I made fish skin mittens, I would put seal so, oil on right. them. Mm -hmm. And seal oil is a very, um, you know, you think of oil as being oil and slippery, but seal mm -hmm. oil, I don't know if you've ever dealt with it, it gets very sticky, mm -hmm. would really adhere um, to your skin. How do you color your fish? This I used a commercial dye. If you go in the grocery store and you see something called Rit dye, I just put that in there for about, it was probably in there for less than five minutes. So a lot of us do different kind of adornments on our ours. Um, I use beadwork because our Athabascan love the floral designs and beadwork. I use a lot of um, Italian shells and beads and sometimes um, abalone shells that were traded.